Looking for a good mini PC with great bang for buck? Well, you can't go wrong with a GMK Tech M6 Ultra. Starting at $340, this mid-range mini PC has a lot of power under its hood. So if you want to produce things, play games, or even emulate high-end systems, this computer certainly can break balls. But does the M6 Ultra have any screws loose? Let's find out. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. So this is what arrived, a box from GMK Tech. No cash has been exchanged, and all thoughts and opinions are our own. So inside the box we get the M6 Ultra Mini PC. Then we need to dig in a little further to get to this piece of card. Inside this is a multi-language instruction manual. And hey, they fixed this. There's three words now. Tribute to innovation. Nice. And here we have the specs. And to be fair, the manual is pretty basic. Only having four pages of information for each language. We also get a 1.5m HDMI cable, and it's also branded GMK Tech with a golden tip. Oh yeah! A power lead for the country you reside in. We've got the American one, as we're in Japan. A VESA bracket, in case we wish to mount the mini PC to the back of our monitor, to a wall, or under a desk. And here's the power supply. And this one's by GVE. It's not exactly massive in size, but it outputs plenty of power. At 19 volts, up to 6.32 amps, at a maximum of 120.08 watts. For the M6 Ultra, this is overkill, but we don't mind at all. And we also get this card. Yeah. Boy. Moving on to the specs now, the GMK Tech M6 Ultra uses the Ryzen 5 7640HS chip. And while it only has 6 cores and 12 threads, the boost of 5GHz on all cores is nothing to laugh about. Outside that and the much faster 760M GPU, this mini PC, as the name suggests, is an M6, albeit updated. You can find the M6 Ultra on Amazon, and there are a few versions. The cheapest is at $340, and this one has 16GB of RAM. If you add $25 to that, you can double the memory if you use that coupon. And if you want the 32 1TB SKU, it's $390. We have affiliate links down below if you want to help out the channel, at no extra cost to yourself, and if you prefer to avoid Amazon, you can order these mini PCs directly from the GMK Tech website. There's a good chance you'll get a better deal here, but it's very difficult to beat the Amazon return policy. Either way, links are in the description, and we're reviewing the 32GB 1TB version. So let's take a closer look. This is the familiar design that GMK Tech have used for the past couple of years. It's plastic, has a nice size to it, and as it has the logo on the top and two stickers, it's fairly non-intrusive, making it fit well in most situations. This design improves on the first set of Ryzen computers, as this has a fan on both the bottom and the top, and we can see holes on the sides where the air can get sucked in. So let's have a look at the front. We have the BIOS reset switch, the power button, a 3.5mm audio jack, USB 4 Type-C, and two USB 3.2 Gen 2s. Moving to the right side we have more air holes, but on the back is where all the action is. As you can see there's a large piece of tape here, and it basically says don't connect to the network until the setup's complete. So let's get rid of that, and let's check out the back ports. We have USB 2.0, another USB 3.2 Gen 2, display port which I assume is 1.4, HDMI 2.0, these both go up to 4K at 60 Hz. There's a couple of 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet LAN ports, and on the end, DC power. Underneath all that, we have the air exhaust for the CPU heatsink, and on the very end, Kensington. Kensington? Yep, Miss Kensington. Moving to the other side, we have more air holes. There's a little cheese grater here. And moving to the underneath, we have a couple of labels, some more air intake holes. These are for the CPU fan. And on each corner, we have these rubber feet. These will stop it sliding around the desk and are a good enough height, so it should help with cooling, as the air can actually get underneath the unit. There's a few screw holes for the vase mount, and some keyhole slots too, so it can easily hook it up to some screws on the wall. It's about time for the size comparison. The M6 Ultra is larger than the G10, and it's around the same length and width of the B-Link EQ13. But saying that, it's a bit taller. Here's a Blackview MP100, and the M6 Ultra still stands high as it has a fan at the top. Here's last year's M6, and it's very similar indeed. Spitting image! Let's just clean these up. And, uh, banana! Oi. Here's a cotton swab. Unused. Usually pick my nose with these. Measuring tape. And last up, a Roy Bosch tea bag. The GMK Tech M6 Ultra is four tea bags big. Yeah. 
So let's test it out. On first boot, it'll load up the Windows setup screen. There's no need to worry though, as the process is very simple and it only takes a few minutes. We need to select our language, region, and then keyboard settings. Then type in our username. Craig David, can I get a rewind? Then after opting out of Skynet and waiting a couple of minutes, we're in. This one here is Windows 11 Pro, updated to 24H2. To activate, we simply need to go online, but first I want to check for malware. And we're happy to report that full scans in Windows Defender, Malwarebytes, and AVG give us the all clear. So now we can log into our Wi-Fi, and we can see that Windows has automatically activated. Now if you feel inclined to do so, you can update Windows and the drivers. So how does it perform? Well, we're glad to say that this is very snappy in Windows, and the system has no problem doing simple tasks like online shopping. Ooh, these are nice. And it'd be very suitable for a student. It's very capable in Office. Or we could create works of art with packages like Krita or Photoshop. Or edit videos in DaVinci Resolve. While it would help to have more cores when rendering, we can see here that this 6 core processor, backed with its DDR5 and NVMe, can edit 1440p footage fairly competently. And the same applies if you want to use this mini PC as a digital audio workstation. This combination of CPU, memory, storage, and even the nice GPU means that FL Studio can run smoothly in 1080p as well as in 4K. And if you wanted to stream 4K video, no problem here. Outside its initial caching phase, YouTube in 4K didn't drop a frame and was smooth as butter. Let's check out some benchmarks. First up is Geekbench, and it outperforms the 6008 core series in both single core and multi core by a solid margin, even beating out the 7735HS, which is basically a rebranded 6800H, and we get a slight boost when using the performance mode in the BIOS. TimeSpy, however, sees the score drag a little, probably due to it only having six cores. But remember, these are only synthetic benchmarks, and only a slight indication of how the machines perform. Here's Cinnabon. The Blender benchmark. Shizuku, showing us we have good speeds from our storage, typical of a PCI 3B4 NVMe. Well, let's move on to something more important, Wi-Fi strength. And at 75% signal on the 5GHz band with no reported drops, it is above average. So let's connect our Bluetooth controller and try out some games. First up is Dave the Diver at 4K. And while it is playable at 30fps, 1080p gives us full speed. Is Rocket League 1080p quality setting. And yeah, runs great. We can even add all the bells and whistles to it, which gives us from 70 to 80 FPS. Next up is Dota 2 at best looking. This one is fairly focused on the CPU, and at 70 FPS, no complaints. This way now. As I planned. Here's Counter Strike 2, 1080p high. And while 40 to 50 FPS isn't ideal, it's certainly not bad. Here's medium. And low. And if you wanted to maximize FPS, 720p low. And if you thought that wasn't violent enough, let's do the same thing with Doom Eternal. As high, medium, low. And with resolution scaling set to dynamic. And last up, Cyberpunk 2077077. 10 speed low hits around 25 FPS. And if we turn on FSR, we get an extra 10. And if we lower resolution to 720p, 
We're almost hitting 60. Turning on frame jam would get over 60, but it'd just be a blurry mess, and who cares for that? Not me. Checking the BIOS, this one's pretty complete. We have three power modes where we can change TDB from 35, 45, and 50, and it has the things we'd usually look for. For example, in the graphics configuration, we can set the VRAM. So if you're playing games that chug every now and then, we suggest dialing this to 4, 6, or maybe above that. We can also set fan speeds, but this really needs fan slopes in order to give us a better method in tuning up our system. Either way, the automatic setting, which is smartphone off, works fine. If we need secure boot for Valorant, we can enable it in here, or we can plug up an SSD via the USB port and boot up Batacera. Our number one choice, for emulation goodness. And in Batacera Linux, we could easily log into our Wi-Fi network, Monkey bars. and also pair up our Bluetooth controller. We could emulate arcade, such as the Sega Model 3, home systems like the Amstrad, Our favourite, the Commodore Amiga. In the nuts. Yeah! Or later systems such as the PSP, and this is upscaled to 5 times resolution. Upscaled PlayStation 2. Or even upper tier emulation, such as the PlayStation 3. Yes. And if you go on PlayStation 3 at full speed, then most systems such as the Wii, Wii U, and even Switch will run extremely well. It's on a PlayStation 3 with Bayonetta, and what a soundtrack. I hope YouTube does not copyright strike me for this because it's a meow. Wow. Next up, noise and temps. In quiet mode idle, we're around 41 degrees, and it's very quiet. And it pulls around 15 watts. Then if we change to balance mode, which raises the TDP, it is slightly warmer, but it's still pretty quiet. And we're still using 10 to 15 watts of electricity. In game, the system does get a bit hotter, but the CPU max is around 80 degrees Celsius. Either way, it's still pretty quiet. While pulling, just over 70 watts from the wall. While raising TDP to 50 watts can speed things up, in the case of Countless Strike 2, the only change we see are high attempts and a louder system. Oh, and higher power draw. And as we can change things fairly easily, Here's how it sound at 100% fan noise. So let's see what's inside this thing. We've seen these GMK cases before, we should be able to... pop its top off. And this plastic cover is held down by a small posi screw in each corner. When removing, Make sure you don't damage the fan cable, as it's connected to the main board. But as you can see, it's fairly easy to access. On the left we have two sticks of DDR5, which would run in dual channel. And for storage, we have this, one stick of NVMe, and another slot in the middle if you want to expand storage. Let's take a look at the memory. So we have a stick of Mason Semi DDR5-4800, and this company has been around since 2022, creating memory and storage solutions. Still, not much is known about them. Let's take a look at the storage. I think this is an air disc. Let's uh, remove this heatsink. Let's give it a bit of wiggle. Yep, it's a PCI 3 before by air disc. Again, a Chinese product for the budget market, and these have been around since 2012. The Wi-Fi chip is the MT7922, and if need be, any of these components can be changed or graded. There are four screws that hold the main board in, and once these are removed, and by bending the case a little, we can get to the guts of the M6 Ultra. Ooh. Hmm. 
There's the heatsink. Let's get in there. And here's our Ryzen CPU. Looks like we've got a nice amount of thermal paste here, and it's doing its job. But for those that want to do maintenance or replace this for something a bit more premium, it's very easy to do on this mini PC. Here's the TimeSpy CPU temperature graph at stock, and now with MX6, showing an improvement of roughly 5 degrees Celsius. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The GMK Tech M6 Ultra is a nice little value packed mini PC. Two fans keep it cool, it's fairly quiet, and being able to do so much on an energy efficient 6 core processor is incredible to see. As for the cons, our main issue with this machine is the choice of NVMe. We'd like to have seen something with at least a Kingston branding, but I guess GMK Tech had to cut costs somewhere in order to keep competitive in the market. Even though we like the original M6, the M6 Ultra is a huge performance upgrade. It belongs in the same tier as perhaps the M7 and M7 Pro, and if you don't need Oculink, this model is a great alternative. If you found this useful, please hit the like button, and um... Summary! Bell and bottle that sucks. Windows 11 Pro. Oh, now bow to the budget of.